Uh, this morning, I want, to, I want to share with us on growing in the love of God. Growing in the love of God. We can turn to our Bibles in the book of 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John and chapter 3. We read verse 1 to verse 3. <clears throat> Sorry. 1 John chapter 3. See what an incredible quality of love the Father has given us shown has given or shown or bestowed on us that we should be permitted to be named and the called and counted the children of God. And so we are. The reason that the world does not know, recognize, acknowledge us is that it does not know, recognize and acknowledge him. Verse 2, Beloved, we are even here and now God's children. It is not yet disclosed, made clear what we shall be hereafter. But we know that when he comes and is manifested, we shall, we shall as God's children resemble and be like him. For we shall see him just as he really is. Verse 3, And everyone who has this hope resting on him cleanses, that is, purifies himself just as he is pure, just, undefiled, guiltless. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. One as for son. Um, let me begin by saying that love is the greatest gift that God has given to the world. There are so many blessings and so many things that God has done um, for his people and in this world. But most of those things will fade away. The Bible records that the physical world that we see today, the book of Second Peter chapter 3, when you read from verse 10 downwards, the Bible records that the things that we see today will melt away. But the gift that God has given to us through his love, and that is salvation, and redemption of our souls is an eternal gift. It's something that we will not end. It's something that is going to be there forever. The life that we have in Christ is an eternal life. It goes on and on and on and on. No wonder Paul says that we should not fix our eyes or focus our attention on the things of this world because he knows the things of this world are temporal. The Bible says that which cannot see is eternal. The things that we see with the physical eyes are for a moment. They are temporal. They are only for this life. And once we are out of this world, they are gone, out of our sight. But the life that God gives us in Christ, the product of his great love to us, is an eternal gift. Hallelujah. And this morning, we want to focus on this God's great love. Hallelujah. That God loved us so much that he would not allow us to perish in hell. That he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So that whoever believes in him would be forgiven their sins and they would receive the gift of eternal life. And so this is great love displayed before us. Amen. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. The Bible says, For God demonstrates his own love towards us. It is his own love. It was his initiative. Nobody did anything to God for God to love us. 
You know it is easy to love someone who is good. It could be easy to love someone who is a friend to you. It could be easy to love someone who has done something nice to you. But loving an enemy is not easy. And the Bible says that while we were still sinners, while we were rebellious, while we were far from God, while we did not know him, while we were enemies of God, God demonstrated his own love towards us. That while we were far from him as sinners, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus. Hallelujah. To die in our place. It is you and me who are supposed to go to the cross. It is you and me who are supposed to suffer. It is you and me who are supposed to die. But Jesus came. He presented himself. And he said, here I am. I have come to do your will. Amen. He says, sacrifice and burnt offerings you did not desire. But a body you are prepared for me. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And for us to be forgiven and to be made righteous and to be acceptable, to be accepted in the beloved, the blood of Jesus are to be shed. And for the blood to be shed, Jesus are to die. So that we might receive the redemption of our souls. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13 says that God has delivered us from the power of darkness. From the power of the devil. We were slaves. Enslaved by the devil. To die in hell forever. But through Jesus. God has delivered us. And he has brought us into the kingdom. Of his dear son Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he says. In him we have redemption. Through the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. We have been redeemed. Purchased not with the perishable things. But with the precious blood of Jesus. That God was willing to surrender his son Jesus to die in our place. That is great love. Say, I am loved. Say, I'm loved by God. Hallelujah. So God loved us when we were sinners, when we had offended him, when we were far from him, and he demonstrated, he demonstrated his love towards us. Hallelujah. Today in Christ we have life. See, I have life. He who has the son of God, John says, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 11, he says, he who has the son of God has life. Has this life. This is, this is the testimony we have that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son Jesus. Then he says that he who, has, who does not have who has the son of God has life if you have Jesus you have life doesn't matter your shape today it's only temporal doesn't matter your circumstances that you're going through today or that you face in this life it's only for a short time the good thing and the good news is that intrinsically you have eternal life on the inside you carry the life of God Jesus came that you might have life and have it more abundantly have it to the fullest. Amen. Life that cannot be snuffed, that cannot be taken away, that cannot be affected by anything in this life. That the devil can only kill and subject you to suffer in this physical body, but he cannot kill you. Amen. Those who are in Christ, Colossians 3.3 3 says, that our lives are hidden with the Christ in God. Because we have the life of God in us. Through his son Jesus Christ. And this is a demonstration of great love. Hallelujah. So I've said that we, we were far from God. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. Says that we, when we were dead in our sins and in our transgressions and in our sins. He has made us alive. Amen. Now we are alive. You may not feel it, but you have it. It's not about feeling. It's a reality. If you have believed in Jesus, if you are saved, if Jesus is your Lord and your Savior, then you need to know that you have this life. You may not feel like you have it. You only need to know you have it. No, the things of God are by faith. 
the transaction that we have between us and God somebody said the currency that we use to transact with the heaven is faith and so that's why hebrews 11:6 says for without faith it's impossible to please God and those who come to God must believe hallelujah and so now the bible says that he has made us alive ephesians 2:1 We who are dead in our transgressions and in our sins. First 2 Ephesians chapter 2 and first 2 in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience people are not born again sons of dis- disobedience those who have not obeyed the truth who have not obeyed the gospel of the Lord Jesus who have not accepted him the bible says they are under the control and of the power or of the control of the prince of the air or the power of the air who is the devil himself the spirit who works in the sons of disobedience that is why they cannot they cannot walk as according to god what they cannot they cannot know god they cannot do the things of god even if you try to tell them this is the way they cannot understand remember that spiritual things are spiritually designed and it's only the spiritual man who can receive them to those who do not have jesus they are foolishness to them because they cannot see them they cannot understand them the bible says the god of this world the devil has blinded their eyes that they cannot see the glory the glorious or the glory of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ but you and me when Jesus is mentioned we understand that code amen when the holy ghost is mentioned we understand it when the prophetic word comes across our spirit can catch it hallelujah when the word of god is being preached a minister to our spirits are open to receive it because there is a connection between us and God he has given us his spirit and by his spirit we can receive the things of God hallelujah the spirit of God is in every believer romans 8:7 says that if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ 7 verse 9 romans 8:9 that if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ he is none of us How can we know Christ without the spirit of God? It is the spirit of God with the spirit of sonship who refused Jesus to us. Hallelujah. And that is why instantaneously when you received when you believed Jesus, the first thing that you received was the spirit of God. By whom now we cry out Abba Father. We relate with God as his children and as our father. because we have received the spirit not of the world but the spirit of god hallelujah say i have the spirit of god i understand the things of god say i am controlled by the spirit of god so it's not like that with people who are not born again they don't have the spirit of god in them that's why when i believe even if a believer does something wrong or mistake the spirit of god will always shed light in their spirit because the spirit of god in you connects with the spirit of god um romans just uh, fast let's go to fast 15 the same chapter 8 fast 15 so that we can understand what we are saying it says for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we do what we cry out abba father verse 16 the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of so there is a communion there's a communication between the spirit of god the holy spirit and the same spirit that has been given to us those are not two different spirits i used to think that the spirit of god there with capital s means refers to the holy spirit which it does and then the spirit there down there refers to a human spirit which does not and as i've gone to study scriptures i have understood that the same spirit of god 
up there with capital S is the same spirit we have in us. He has become our spirit. And that is why there is a communion. Okay, there are some people who believe that man is a spirit and he has a soul and he lives in a body. But the challenge with that belief is because spirit don't die. A spirit cannot die and cannot change. Spirits are eternal. Whether good spirit or bad spirit. Now in that form, if we are spirits, it means we cannot die. And if we, if we cannot die, we cannot attain to immortality. We don't know how we shall be like. We cannot understand now. But we know that when he comes, we shall be like him. That means we shall assume full manifestation of immortality. Because once we die, Paul says in 1 Corinthians, if you read carefully, he says that this, the body that you saw is not the body that is raised. There is a glory of a body that is sown and there is a different glory of the body that is raised from the dead. Just like when you saw a seed, the way you saw it is not the way it comes out. Jesus, the Bible says, is the firstborn among many brethren. He is the firstborn from resurrection. He is the first one who was raised from the dead. Actually, it's called the first fruits. That means he is the only one who gained or attained immortality from death. All the other men who died and rose from the dead died again. But we know when Jesus is revealed, when he is manifested, we shall be like him. In other words, we shall be immortal. We shall be having eternal life in us. The eternal life that God has given us is a promise because we are first to die or to be changed from this body which is mortal. So we understand that. Eh? Those who are dead in Christ, they will be raised from the dead. Okay? Those who will be alive when Jesus comes, they will not die, but they will be changed. That's why I've said that spirits, if we were just spirits, then there would be no hope of resurrection. But we are, we are flesh and blood. And we, have, we are a soul, a living soul. And that is why when someone dies, the soul rests in the grave. You are just waiting for resurrection. When the spirit will raise Jesus from the dead, at the trumpet, when the trumpet is blown by the angel, the archangel, he will go everywhere, wherever everybody who is born again has died. And he will raise them up back to life. But they will not be raised in the same body which can die. They will be given another body. That's why now the Bible says, we shall see Jesus as he is because we shall be like him. We shall have spiritual eyes. We shall have spiritual insight that can understand Jesus fully. Today we cannot fully comprehend him. Today we cannot fully understand how immortality is like. Because we are still in the flesh. But once we are changed, once we are translated, once we have been given immortality, then we shall have, we shall be like Jesus. There will be no limitation at all. The way Jesus can be anywhere, everywhere, anytime, we shall be like that. You remember after he was raised from the dead, his disciples were together in a house, they were fearing the Jews. And the Bible says they were Thomas was there together with them. You remember Thomas had been told that Jesus, we have seen Jesus, and he said, Unless I do what? I see him and I touch. I cannot do what? I can't believe. And so another time they are in a room together, and the, the doors and the windows are closed, and all of a sudden Jesus appears before them. And he tells Thomas, Bring your hand and feel. My hands and my ribs and the scars and stop doubting and be believing. And
And when he touched Jesus, he, he said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus says, now because you have seen me, you have done what? You have believed. Yet blessed is he, tho, tho is he, although he has not seen, he has done what? He has believed. Hallelujah. So we are talking about the great love of God that he has bestowed upon us through Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, Ephesians 2, verse 3, where we have read, that we like others were objects of what? Of wrath. We were under condemnation. We were going to hell. We were lost in our sins and transgressions. We did not have God. Chapter 11, chapter, chapter verse 11 and 12 says that we did not have God in the world. We were separated from the commonwealth of Israel. We, was, we were outside God's covenant promises. We had nothing to claim. But we who are far from God through Jesus or through the, by the blood of Jesus, we are be brought near. Hallelujah. And that is love. That we were sinners and enemies. God could reach out to us and bring us close to himself. We are at the bosom of Jesus. We stay at, we are there very close to him. We are intimate with him. That is why we share the same spirit. The same spirit who was in Jesus is the same spirit who is in us. The same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit who raised us from the dead. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19. Ephesians 1 19. And what is the exceeding, exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Verse 20. Which he worked in Christ when he did what? He raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Paul is saying that the same mighty power, the same spirit, the same anointing that raised Jesus from the dead is the same that works in us. Is the same power that works in the believer. I want you to know that as you walk in the streets of this, this city or everywhere in the world, you carry the power of God inside. You are endued with the power of God. You are endued the same power that Jesus had. That is why the things that Jesus did, he says that those who believe, we will do them even greater things. Hallelujah. That is why today we can heal the sick just like Jesus did. We can raise the dead just like Jesus did. We will speak things that they will come to pass just like he did because the same spirit was in him who enabled him to do these things is the same spirit who is in us. Hallelujah. We have seen that we have not received the spirit of the world to fear. We have received the spirit of God. The spirit of Christ by whom we cry Abba Father. Hallelujah. And so the world, the Bible says the world does not know us because it does not know him who has saved us. Hallelujah. Now we are children of God. Behold, behold what manner of love the Father has done, what has given to us that we should be called the sons of God. And it's not only being called, we are sons of God. Hallelujah. We are not just called children of God. It's not just a name, it's a reality. We are active children of God. This is your one, our combo. We are we are legitimate sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Muna jo wana wakambo. Eh? Mutoto wakambo ni mutoto ambaye mama ameolewa na baba mwingine. Sindio? Dan ya kwamba huyu baba, huyu Baba ambaye na kijana na ama mtoto na mwita baba, sio baba kumza. Injapokuwa ni baba, lakini sio yeye. Sasa sisi, sio watoto wakambo. Kwa mungu, we are legitimate sons and daughters. We have been born of God. We are born of the spirit of God. Hallelujah. And that's why we relate with him as our father. And that is why death has no power over us. That is why the world has no power over us. That is why we, we have victory through Christ. Amen. And the Bible says, nothing shall do what? Separate us from the love of 
of God. This love is so great. We grow knowing how much God loves us because if God loved us while we were sinners, how much more now that we are sons? How much more now that we are saints? How much more now that we are children of God? If just come to think of it, if God did something about our situation, when we were enemies, when we were far from him, when we were sinners, when we were gentle sinners, dead in our transgressions, in our sins, when we were under the power of the prince of the air, how much more now that we have been men's sons, that we are in his kingdom. Hallelujah. That we are members of the body of Christ. How much more? That though we, was, we were objects of wrath, but because, verse 4 says, Ephesians 2, 4 says, but because of God's great mercy, who is rich in love. Is it? Because of God's great... Yes, but, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great, great love with which he, he did what? What kind of love did God love us with? What kind of love? It's here. What kind of love? How much love? Great love. Say, I am loved greatly. Say, I am the beloved of the Lord. Say, I have been accepted in the beloved Son of God. Hallelujah. And because we have been accepted and we are loved so much, the Bible says, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Not death. Not sword, not peril, no danger, no human beings, no angels, no demons, no height, no depth. Paul says that, that we may know and understand God's great love, his depth, its depth, its height, its width, his love in Christ Jesus. That we cannot comprehend God's love. It's so high. It's so deep. It is so wide. We cannot finish it. We cannot exhaust it. That no matter what, God still loves us. The love is so intense. The love is so real. The love is so great. Hallelujah. And on what, no matter what you go through, child of God, I want you to know that God loves you. That should sink in our hearts. That God loves me no matter what. Amen. No matter what happens today or tomorrow, we are still in the love of God. If God, the Bible says, did not spare his own, only son, only begotten son. Romans 8, that too. He who did not spare his own son, his only begotten son, Jesus. But he gave him up for us all. How will he not alongside Jesus? Freely do what? Give us how many things? All things. It's not because of anything that we have done. It's not because of our works. It is because of Jesus. God to bless you. God to heal you. God to lift you. God to protect you. God to deliver you. It's because he loves you. It's because you have been loved in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And that love is so great in Jesus. We cannot exhaust it. As you wake up in the morning, as you sleep, as you go about your businesses, at the back of your mind, in your spirit, just know the love of God for you is great. And that love is permanent. That's why Paul says, nothing shall do what? Shall separate us. If it was temporal, then we would, would be, you know, we will not be sure. Because we don't know when the contract is ending. Kama ingekua nikitu ya reja reja, ama nikitu ya muda tu. Unaza amuka leo ukute mungu wakwambi me expire. But thank God, it's permanent. Hallelujah. This love is an ending. Let us grow in it. Hallelujah. Let us love him, let us seek him, let us fellowship with him, and let us serve him, let us worship him, knowing that his love is eternal. May the Lord bless you and keep your heart strong in him. Hallelujah. Amen. Twasema
Semana Santa.